big uh, virtual welcome for Abhishek and Valmik. Over to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Steve, for the introduction. Myself and my colleague, Valmik, will be taking this session. So our today's topic is human-centric digital assistance. It is very much apt in the current scenario where every organization is realizing the need for automating mechanical works, clerical jobs, and introducing digital assistance. Human life is very precious and is meant to do value add for business. It is high time that we actually introduce digital assistance in our daily work wherever applicable. So this slide, I would like to take a pause on this slide so that each of you think through that what are the pain areas in your organization where you require digital assistance and why? Can you think at least three things that you would like to change because you consider it to be bad work? Can you think that what work works you at your workplace? What causes you pain? What is biting you? What's broken and what needs to be fixed? This slide highlights the inference taken from the survey conducted by an analyst last year, which is focusing whether the organization expects significant increase in the role of digital worker or will the activities remain with the human colleagues by end of 2021. We have categorized the complexity of the overall activities into three categories, low, medium, and high. As for the survey, routine technological skills such as data processing and performing complex technical activities as highest potential for intelligent automation and basic skills as good potential for intelligent automation. These skills leave significant thinking to us, which will be structural thinking, problem solving, and decision making. So how do we make the shift? Let's analyze that what is the work work break of a common employee. There are a lot of bad work, some amount of good work, and less great work. Can we revert this one? Is this possible? Can we utilize our human brain, which is very much uniquely designed to adapt to new challenges and predict various outcomes, which takes year and month for a machine to be trained on? Why not use our valuable gift, the brain, to do something which is much more worthy than spending time on bad work, such as redundant data entries and mechanical tasks. This slide prompts us to think how we can make a shift to the quality of work, what we do. Increment, incremental changes from redundant to value-add tasks will slowly change the way organization operates today. In the next slide, so here, what we have done essentially that we have changed our approach in addressing the challenges. Traditionally, we had process-centric work where we were scanning end-to-end -end processes and trying to fully automate, but the impact was not much due to less adoption. However, when we change the pivot from process to the actors and make it human-centric, the impact will be more and adoption will increase. There are various avenues to introduce digital assistant in our daily work. One significant could be our body could be the SCDA, which is human centric digital assistant. Leave alone the IT industry. Even if you think about the private or public sector, there are ample opportunities to replace the human tasks to be done by a smart digital assistant. This is like manufacturing companies, banks, post office, and it's smart to transform the operation done by humans. If, for example, even in the current scenario of COVID-19, where the lack of digital assistance in bank, FMCG, call center of many companies, it poses the risk of human employees. In this slide, we are introducing the concept of digital assistance which is a virtual co-worker designed to carry out certain tasks, which are human tasks, human-centric tasks. If you smartly design the enterprise architecture of the organization and keep digital technology first, in fact, that's our team of the this year, then it will be much easier to implement this digital assistance on the impacted segments. 
HCDA, which is Human Centric Digital Assistant, that intends to automate tasks and processes for the actor. It can also interact with another virtual agent, which will improve the coordination and reduce information queries between the employees. In the next slide, in this slide, I'm talking about the technical ingredients of the digital assistant. How this digital assistant can be made. At high level, the technologies can be categorized into three sections, which is RPA, uh, robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, and analytics. Again, in RPA, there will there are two components: the bot orchestrator and bot client. There could be two scenarios in RPA. One will be attended and unattended. Attended is something which is leveraged when someone wants to perform the front-end related tasks. Unattended is something when someone wants to perform the back-end related activities. In artificial, the main component of AI which has been used as part of the HCDA are NLP, NLU. Uh, this is used to comprehend the meaning and intent of content to improve decision making. To analyze the sentiment and tone of the users employee, then to classify the user complaints, it simulates the conversations used to identify and categorize unstructured content which allows the bot to extract decision making data. The third piece of this section is the fuzzy logic. This is used to increase the data. And the last but not the least is the machine learning under AI. This has been used for improvisation. AI engine learns from the data and improvises over a period of time, and for that purpose it has been used. And the last component, which is the analytics, this technology is used for meaningful reporting so that management can take the right decisions at right time. This slide talks about the overall solution architecture architecture. We can categorize this overall solution architecture into four parts. The first one, which is which you are seeing on the left, that's uh, just talking about the different channels. It could be through your uh, uh, channels like team or through any portal. Then the second layer is the client component, which again can be classified into two parts. One is the conversational AI platform such as chatbot, then the RPA client platform using what that trigger will be sent to the server component and the third section which is the core engine comprises of the orchestrator control room then the AI engine. Even the orchestrator which you are seeing in the middle one that's the core component and these take care of the license management, bot scheduling, credential management, the bot prioritization, there could be some scenario that you want to prioritize the bot. Then you want to schedule some specific bot to run at this, some specific timing. Then you want to store your credential in some kind of a secure credential vault. So all these things would be taken care of by the orchestrator control room. There could be also some scenario where you need to uh, handle the bot request queuing part, so that also would be taken care of by the control room, the orchestrator layer. There is also integration required with the other enterprise system to exchange the right information. So this is the overall solution architecture of the, our human-centric digital assistant. Now I would like to hand over to my colleague, Bomik, who will explain that how to design the HCDA, and he will also take you, take you through the interesting case study of one of the HCDA use case. Yeah, handing over to you, Bhamik. Hey, thank you, Abhishek. Hope I'm audible to all. Uh, so as Abhishek has, uh, uh, can you acknowledge, uh, am I audible to all? Yes, Bhamik, you are. Yes, you are. Thanks. thanks. Yes. So thanks, Abhidik, uh, Abhishek, for taking through a concept note and uh, technology enablers. And also, uh, you've shown what is the overall solution architecture. Uh, 
I will be talking about uh, you know design principles of this transformation and a roadmap for this journey through a case. So as the, the core of this transformation is human centricity, our design principles are also built around human journeys. It could be an internal journey, it could be an external journey, it could be a journey of an employee, or it could be a journey of a client. So how typically it is done? So we should begin by deconstructing the job profile of a user's role in an organization. So largely we are, for illustrating the case, uh, we are taking an internal example. So when we deconstructing the job profile of user's role in an organization, we understand what are his key KPIs, what are his motivations, and what are the experiences that he goes through uh, during each of his journey. And here the intention is to study the various job tasks, get his volume details, by performing a time and motion study at an aggregate level. Now we conduct a design thinking led approach that I will be talking brief in the next slide to identify the pain areas in his various journeys. And then we come up with a solution spectrum on an overall level. We identify what are the key problems and define an MVP construct, so minimum viable product construct. There might be a case that some solution require a change in existing data strategy that we have. Uh, we may have to tweak or you know, create a new data strategy altogether. So we, once we've done that, once we define the data strategy, we build an implementation model uh, with existing maturity of the organization. And then there is a roadmap in plan. So uh, while that, that slide gives an overall uh, approach, uh, we understand you know, where it is coming from. We all know that when organizations evolve, processes become more and more standardized. However, it also brings a reduction in innovation level. We need, we, we, there is a clear need to focus less on standardized tasks which are already there in place and more on standardizing the new innovative things. Uh, how can I get to the next level of business? So why design thinking? Where does it fit? Well, mostly design thinking led approach is desired to, um, to problem solve, to deconstruct any problem statement, arrive at possible solution path, uh, what is the solution spectrum of any problem, adds more dimension in a, in a solution space, and helps you validate quickly whether you are going in the right direction, you need a course correction. So typically we conduct when design thinking workshops with functional experts, SMEs, uh, you know, users. We keep asking such questions which are very fundamental to his daily journey is now how do we get you to do more meaningful work? How do we get you to do uh, contribute more and more uh, and make more impact in your organization. How do we get you grow your work practice in your organization? Uh, how do we get you to you know make you a real impact that you always desire? And how do we help you amplify the human potential in your practice or in your segment or in your in your workspace? So so you know these are the fundamental questions that we keep on asking uh, to. Get, to arrive at a, a pain point of that user, let's let's talk it through a case study. So, um, this slide says a glimpse of an analysis done on a target role folder, which is a QA engineer. What essentially we have done initially, we have deconstructed his job profiles for a segmented users, and this talks about one segment user of uh, QA engineers. And we have performed a detailed analysis and after conducting various time and motion study, we have uh, understand the pain points by co-creation method, which is again the design thinking led approach and gather all the same, uh, the pain points of that shared segment. So, so on right hand side, we have all of the, you know, different few pain areas that is listed by, you know, for all of our QA engineers. 
now some areas can help him do his job more efficiently uh, some help him uh, work more effectively while some areas can increase uh, experience of that individual as well as stakeholders that he interact on daily basis so to arrive at a you know a, a minimum viable product before that we identified what is the problem that we can solve and then the solution spectrum where we there is an opportunity to create a maximum impact for a rural community we define a potential solution set now this leaves a room for significant per career assignment uh, greater employee efficiency so these are the drivers uh, that drives the solution set uh, needs to have better employee efficiency uh, better effectiveness in work enhance employee experience as well as uh, stakeholder experience so with this design principle in mind we've come up with a modular approach now so so this slide is uh, while this slide talks about you know what is our uh, you know hcda engineer of a qa uh, engineer uh, what are the different skills that our current level of maturity of qa engineer uh, uh, has gone through in his mod in his journey you know the i would like to emphasize on the modularity that a platform has to have and it has overall three benefits first is it helps augmenting my product features very quickly and by independent teams in organization so development process can be democratized and you know it can be accessible to all so people are you know they are they are innovatively they bring their expertise building solution more quickly and more innovatively second it also gives you a flexibility to change the solution that earlier required only a basic skills but has grown in complexity over a period of time so earlier something that used to happen with certain steps now require more skills to complete and third why modular approach is because there is a you know a positive network effect between two sides of my platform and as a platform i have one side i have a developers other side i have actual testers now my developers on a platform as they build more and more solution this attracts more and more user base and when i have more and more user base it poses a good opportunity for developers to develop and build innovative solutions so fundamentally there are three um three large scale benefits for uh, going through a modular design of a platform now here we have tried to um, you know arrive at an implementation model how do we go about doing it how do we uh, give something to employ very quickly uh, while tasks that require very simple application and data management are implemented through basic process automation or rpa technology and tasks that require you know more analytical and statistical uh, modeling were involved they are all implemented through ai levers uh, machine learning nlp ocr formatter so implementation model evolves over a period of time for largely two reasons first is that certain skills are supported by basic process automation solution are no longer sufficient or they may warrant a process redesigning also there is a you need to bring a change in arriving at a decision by adding more and more variables more and more data to support and more faster and in real time so because of these two reason you need a evolving implementation model so it's all dynamic model it's not a static model and lastly i'm going to talk about uh, in an enterprises digital transformation um, you know path to capture your maximum value is reversed um instead of aligning your people strategy to your operating model and organization change your operating model by focusing on changing the people strategy technology anyways continues to be an enabler it has been for everyone at almost same pace some were early adopter some were you know not an early adopter but accessibility of technology remains almost same so first you have to get through 
you know, uh, you have to re-engineer your processes by introducing a uh, new digital assistant, take some part of your job task, you know, help him do the certain task, give 40% of uh, task to him, conduct 60% yourself, and then you leverage AI capabilities and you fundamentally redesign the way of work, redesign the processes, and, you know, bring more, more changes. And once these two steps are done, you finally, your platform model-based capability adds more competencies in your organization. It helps you evolve faster and at scale, bring a change in your fundamental operating model. It can help you uh, introduce more services that never existed before. It can help you create new revenue streams. So altogether, uh, with this insight, I think I would like to conclude my presentation and happy to answer all of the questions. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Um, great to see these uh, these case studies and 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 focus on the uh, digital digital assistant. Now, first question that came in was, how do you deal with the employees who see the digital assistant as a threat? Yeah, so. A threat in the sense, uh, as you see that so the topic is human-centric digital assistant to improve the productivity. So mm -hmm. in fact, it is not a threat; rather, it will it will enable the to focus on productive work and do the right job for which actually human being human being uh, for which we are supposed to do. So actually, it is creating more time for us than being a threat. So we are seeing from that perspective. Mm. Uh, I would like to um, add as well a few points. See, we, we, we have actually, you know, we have brought a culture change uh, by, you know, conducting multiple communication channels. And we have not actually, you know, given them or hand over something to them. But we have involved them in our transformation journey. So more you involve the stakeholders, they themselves see, they themselves see that, you know, I want to uh, increase my learning curve. I'm not satisfied. I don't want to do this repetitive task. And that is an area, that is an accelerator that, um, you know, employees don't see them as, uh, as you know, cannibalizing the model. But they, they themselves see that they want to move up the ladder quickly. And I think, you know, we, you have to involve them in your journey. Right. Yeah. That the employees uh, see that they could focus on the higher value, value add tasks rather than the, uh, the more uh, mundane ones. Um, next question. What is... Uh, the success with HCDA in RPA. Can you share some data from a, a successful implementation? So, uh, yes, adoption initially it was not much when we started because of a uh, lot of challenges. Uh, yeah. The first challenge was uh, even what you what you said that there was some kind of a threat, and so we were not getting full participation initially. But slowly and slowly, we are seeing the adoption. So uh, I think over the period of time, there will be a success. And we are seeing the adoption rate is more and more. But initially, it was not 100% uh, success. Yeah, so Omi, you want to add anything? Yes, and, and uh, one more dimension to this as uh, an RP as an if the question is asked in a, uh, you know, more whether an RP is a successful technology or it's not capable. So right. we have seen that yes, yes, um, RP is a technology that that brings uh, uh, you know the, the agile manner of transformation, uh, you know certain tasks. So, so faster cycle, faster build cycle. Uh, when you know I, I go and create an AI based uh, use case and implement that, it helps me you know take certain time to create my models, create tested based models, train them. It takes certain time. While when I do it from RPA, what happens that you know there are certain tasks which are very fixed, very mundane. Uh, success ratio of my RPA based use case or RPA based bot actually is not 100% all the time. Certain times bots also get failed because of various reasons. There is it's all it's all XY coordinate based automation. So certain times you know UI has changed. There is a rapid um, upgrade, rolling upgrade was there, so systems got UI changed and it's all hard coded and you have to bring more parameterized and more support required. But uh, 
And so what always RP bot doesn't, uh, you know, successfully execute all the time, but you have to design it uh, where you see the variable of uh, instance of failures of bots are high. And then, you know, see what are the learnings that you can adopt to your RPA bot. So it's a, it's a journey for our RPA. Uh, and uh, we are seeing that solution is also promising. Great. Okay. Thank you. Would you believe one of the questions was how does a bot client, how is a bot client helpful for a QA engineer? So you covered that beautifully in the presentation. Um, how does HCDA help to come up with a minimum awesome product instead of a minimum viable product? I, I don't know if you were able to attend yesterday, but we had uh, some colleagues from Nationwide Insurance in the US talk about minimum awesome project uh, product. So how, how would the HCDA um, help come up with a minimum awesome product instead of a minimum viable product? I certainly am not too sure with that. Uh, but Abhishek, would, uh, did you get a chance to attend yesterday's event that talk about this? I think it was more. It, sorry, I, 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 I'll, it, 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 it was more about um, let's let's try and before we actually go with with uh, a minimum viable product, let's see if we can do something that's a little better without um, or something that will. They talked about um, uh, something that was aimed at client delight you know customer delight and and satisfaction rather than just the minimum uh the minimum viable product yeah <clears throat> so if in fact uh, I think in one of our presentation we have put so that's uh, kind of a shift so even we are doing the same we are proposing the same that instead of focusing into a process why can't we pick a specific process which is a human centric and then just automate or provide the kind of a wow factor to the employee so that employee gets more time, more and more time for the, and that will increase the productivity of the employee. Right. But, uh, so that's the kind of, it is in very much in align with the minimum awesome product. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. In fact, we were not aware about this thing. But yeah, it is very much in align with the minimum awesome. That's great. That's great. Now it's a nice twist. Gentlemen, we're we're right on time and due a break. So um, thank you both, Abhishek and Barmik, for your for your insight and uh, and sharing your experience. And we look we look forward to um, seeing more of these in the workplace.